obviously we're going to have about a 35-minute show. We're not going to be able to get everybody in there. I appreciate it. Uh, it's the old force majeure clause. Uh, it's out of my control. It happens maybe once, twice a year. It is what it is, but I'd very much like to thank our sponsors for bringing this show. Thank you. For those of you who stuck around, all five of you, uh, I really do appreciate it. We, we put in the work in trying to produce a show every, every week, and uh, sometimes it just goes up in smoke. And that's why I'd like to thank the guys who are on this show today, because they've been sitting here just waiting, watching the 55th place guy get interviewed, uh, and then drink his whatever it is he drinks. Chuck Cavallaris, Will West, Ryan Callahan, Bob Hodge. I couldn't be trapped in that hell with four better people <laughs> than I was with you. Okay. Uh, let's, we're going to be quick. We're only going to get a few of these segments in. It is what it is. Uh, Tennessee had a huge get in basketball. We'll start with basketball. Yes, we'll get to baseball and softball next. But we start with basketball. On Friday, Tennessee lands Florida, North Florida guard Chaz Lanier. We had said last week, Kentucky's now in this thing. If this comes down to just NIL money and the money that Kentucky's got to wave around, they've got the new coach, they're having to rebuild their whole roster. It, they made all kinds of promises that we're going to have four or five million. It's just we're waiting there for our coach to go out and use. We said on this show, well, if it's in a bidding war with Kentucky, I don't like my chances, but we'll see where it goes. Right. Jazz Lanier, apparently, Tennessee made a good enough offer, cash wise, kudos, but also. He said he was interested in improving his defense, a la Dalton Connect. Exactly. And as Rick Barnes says, he's also interested in getting another SEC title to Tennessee and competing for a national title. And here's where I go with this. One, I never anticipated Rick Barnes having this kind of impact at Tennessee this long on, this far into it. I didn't expect that. But when you look at this, it's a great get for Tennessee and Barnes. Or but is it a bigger get for Tennessee and Barnes than it is a bigger loss for Pope and Kentucky right now? And both, either way, right. it's a net positive for Tennessee, obviously. Right. But you just went head-to-head -head with Kentucky. How many mm -hmm. times that happened in Tennessee basketball history? You went and got somebody they were after, and you've already got a roster that's pretty good. You're coming off a championship. They're trying to rebuild. They don't get him. So is this a bigger win? For Tennessee and Barnes, or a bigger loss for Kentucky and Pope? Who it's it? a bigger win for whoever got him. And th th with that being Tennessee, you're getting a 6'4 shooting guard that may have led the country in three-pointers made and dunks. He was the number one player available. It's like the NFL draft. He's the number one player available and he, you, a, a, a scorer that you need to replace Dalton Connect's scoring. Totally different styles. But to do what Dalton Connect did instead of in terms of putting the ball in the basket, I, I think it's Kentucky. I think it's a bigger loss for them because I think there is, this is especially humbling for them because you couldn't go get any of the coaches you thought you could go get. You That's ended right. up having to bring in Mark Pope. Mm -hmm. Then you put money into NIL, and it doesn't matter. You still can't beat out Tennessee even when you have more money. I think for Kentucky, this is a bit of a wake up call, and I do wonder if we're about to see them drop just a little bit. I don't think they'll but, drop for long, but I, go ahead. I was just going to say that's exactly what I think. What you, what you got is a situation where Kentucky is kind of where Tennessee was in the early 2000s in football. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you've been good. You've won. You're great. You're Tennessee. Nothing will ever change. Okay, now, Kentucky, you, you, you push your coach out. You you've not been winning in the NCAA tournament. You haven't been right. winning. You haven't been winning the SEC. So, yeah, I think this shows that Kentucky now – yeah, will they probably turn it around? Probably. I thought Tennessee was going to be turning things around in football for a lot of years, and it took over a decade. So, so I'm going huge win for Tennessee, big, big, big loss for Kentucky. Well, which is which is a bigger win for Tennessee or bigger loss for Kentucky? It was three bigs versus one huge <laughs> to three wins. It was a bigger loss for Kentucky. I okay. Um, and here's the thing. It is easier to turn basketball around than football. Yes, but, right. But I think the, the analogy, this is – Humbling is the word. Is it a bigger loss or bigger win? I'll go bigger win for Tennessee. It hurts Kentucky. I no doubt about that. Uh, I, I just think the statement that this sends for Rick Barnes to win a battle like this, you, you were always thought to be the third highest offer on the table, whether that's fair yeah. or not. But a lot of people thought BYU brought um, more, more money to the fight, yeah. and Kentucky throw, obviously was throwing in a lot. Um, so for this to, to be one that goes Tennessee's way, despite them coming in with less money, just kind of having a, uh, the pull to say, Come be Dalton Connect. We'll help you get to the NBA. He's going to be a lottery pick now. Right. You can do the yeah. same thing. 
that says a lot about Rick Barnes and what he's done with this program. And the other since thing he, I'd say, too, since Pope took over at Kentucky, things had gone his way. He had been getting what he wanted, right? Yeah, this was the, first, the well. Yeah, from what I saw, of building their roster. Well, the, yeah, I mean they still got. You go one read more, the Kentucky message one boards. One more key target, but from what I've read Jackson and Ross, what yeah. I saw, this was the first time he didn't really get what he wanted. But, um, but you knew the second he tweeted that Bible verse and posted that Bible verse to Instagram right after a meeting with Deacon Barnes. I oh. said right there off the air, I said, <laughs> yeah. oh, Tennessee's about to land this kid. <laughs> like that exactly at that I, moment. I think it's a bigger loss for Kentucky. It's a great gift for Tennessee. I don't want anybody hearing this going, you will preach Tennessee. Of course it's a positive for Tennessee. It's a net positive even if you say it's a bigger loss for Kentucky. Here's why I say it's a bigger loss to Kentucky. You had people in the athletics saying two weeks ago, even without Chaz Lanier, Tennessee had a top ten roster coming back. Yeah. They, he'd already brought in three transfer guys. You've got some talent on the roster that remain. It was already projected as a top 10 roster. Kentucky is trying to create a top 20 roster. They didn't get in. You were already top 10. You added to your riches. They're still clawing like wildcats. <laughs> uh, I think it's a, I well, think I'll, it's a I'll, kick I'll, in the teeth for I'll Kentucky. I'll turn it around one last time. What if you hadn't have got him? How big of a loss would it? I think You'd it still have a top been, ten roster. Uh, I'm not quite so sure. I buy that. You'd have a better roster, than Kentucky. Well, better regardless, roster than, I don't yeah. know if it's top ten. We'll just combine. It's, okay. Well, it's yeah. a short term loss for Kentucky. That he, Mark Pope's not going to be judged on this year. That's the ultimate. Result here. I mean, he, he's got. Have you read the Kentucky you. message? I was say it's Kentucky. <laughs> he's all. You're all. I, I, I went to the first place. Yeah. I went, and they're like, we got the wrong guy. Judged on this year yeah. in today's environment. No, he'll be judged on this year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Some. So they'd be just how they do against Arkansas. He would be better off if he had a better track record. <laughs> if he had done anything at all yeah. at BYU in yeah, terms right. of in the tournament, it would have been a different beast. I just think the fact that Chaz is from Tennessee, like right. there's some things where Kentucky fans, if they look at it big picture, oh, they're trying can that. shrug they're, it off. They're also like, saying they, we didn't go all in with our cash. We were saving right. some of that. It was part to him. There was that other kid that was in the draft. Yeah. That's yeah. who they wanted, right? Right. Yeah. So. Uh, Either way, it's a big win for Tennessee and a big yeah. loss for Kentucky. They can mm -hmm. try and claim. What was funny, though, and I'm, I didn't. I, wound, I was going to put it up, and I wound up not doing it because it's the same here. It's the same at Alabama. It's the same at California. Well, they don't care. But <laughs> the Kentucky tweets and texts and stuff on the message board was all, why is Tennessee even trying? They can't get this kid against us. We own this kid. And as soon as he announces he's coming to Tennessee, you had half of them saying, Mark Pope sucks. Why did we hire this clown? <laughs> the other half said, we didn't want him to begin yeah, with. He averaged yeah. four points a game right. two years ago in the A-Sun. It's not going to translate from that league. Nobody right. wanted him in the first place. He wasn't even a starter his first three years. That's exactly what you saw. Yes, right. yes. Exactly. So uh, it's flipped pretty quick. It was like, he's great. We want him. Oh, he sucks anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's a tremendous gift uh, get for Tennessee and Rick Barnes. We'll get back to that point in just a minute. But first... Let's catch a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about baseball, softball, and we got a little more to come when we come back on the Sports Source. 